magical thinking conspiracy theory bullshit. But then the other part, of the, right across from them, which would be their polar opposite, right, would be the Christian right. And the Christian right would be saying this is satanic, new age um, entrapment. And then the middle is going to thrive. You have to thrive experience. You put them all together, it's a pyramid. So you have a triangulation going on with the movie. So that's the criticism that, I, that I've seen in the film. And the criticism has come from both of these camps. It hasn't necessarily come from within the kind of the circle of people that would be interested in Thrive per se, although I am I am one of them. There are other people. I put it in my newsletter. Put some information in my newsletter about Thrive. And I'm working on a longer post about Thrive, which hopefully I'll get out today. I just have a ton of stuff to do. But um, but that's that's kind of where that's that's where I am with the film. I mean, I think that, that, that what you have to do again is you have to you know really break this down. And, and you know, if you want to be engaged in the pursuit of what we would call truth, or we want you want to you want to find out what's real, you, you have to use your brain. You know, you've got to use your brain. Say, okay, what's going on here? Who are the players? What's the goal? What's the intent? Why is it happening now? You know, why why is the advertising everywhere? Why is that really hot looking woman, uh, you know, just shown one eye, you know, and and the and the the the, the uh, eye mask that she uses to sleep looks like uh, the stars and stripes, but it's dark. I mean, why you know why that imagery, and why now? Why eleven, eleven, eleven? You know why you know why during the crest of the not even the crest of the ramp up of Occupy Wall Street? I mean, what's why why are all these things taking place now? Why are these people in the film? Who are they? What are they about? What are they trying to sell? I just think that if we want to be really free, we have to, we have to just again, without being complete, completely and utterly rejecting things outright. We have, to, but we have to crunch this data to see where it fits and how it feels. And, and, and you know, it could fit really good, and it could fit you know, really closely and really right. It'd be very close to what we would would love to 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 say. Yeah, this is it. Finally, we're getting it. We're gonna break through. You just have to be careful. You have to be careful with those kinds. Of, and I'm learning, and I've learned over time that you have to be careful. You can't necessarily jump into it right away. Now, I'm going to tell you, there is a point. And it's not that far away. It is not that far away. There is a point where you're going to have to jump into something. It's just the way it is. I mean, there is going to be a, a, a movement, social movement, where you're going to have to say either yes or no. To it, and if, and if you say no to it, what does that mean? If you say yes to it, what is it going to mean? I mean, it may not be perfect, but at some point, you may have to throw in with it. It's kind of like, you know, I hate to use this analogy, but it's like the Bolshevik Revolution. You know, when when that happened, it wasn't necessarily perfect. Had lots of strange bedfellows. You know, the, the Bolsheviks were were not the they weren't the the soldiers. And, and the sailors who were the, the muscle behind it, and they both wanted very different things out of a revolution. But they threw it together, and it's like, well, let's get it done, and we'll figure out the details. It's like the details aren't, aren't as important as resting control, which is, in a lot of ways, kind of similar to Occupy Wall Street. It's like the details really aren't that important. Let's just rest control. You know, it's a little tricky. But I think there will be a time where, you know, it's going to be one of it's. It's a real flux moment, and you may have to you may have to throw in at some point, or else I don't know, or else get left in the dust. I mean, the other thing too is do nothing, and, and I think that there's a, there's there's a, a a strategy behind doing nothing, which is not a bad strategy. I just think you need a lot of people to do nothing. But sit back, you know. My my advice to you which is my advice to myself now, whenever I see anything, I, I just take a step back a little bit. And I, and I allow my, my emotions to be just slightly tempered and say, well, this could be really cool, but let's spend some time in it. And then let's vet it. And if it's really cool, then let's, you know, let's get into it. Let's, let's, let's throw some weight behind this. This is important. And, 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 and the more that you do it, the better you get at it. 
see, let's step back. Let's look at this crisis. What's really going on? And what it does is it, is it keeps you more in the moment, much more in the moment. And when you're more in the moment, you can see details that are obscured. One of the things that obscures details is our frenzied reaction to them. Like, for instance, when 9-11 happened, how many really interesting details were obscured because people were in a state of panic? A lot. How many details were obscured because people were in a state of trauma? A lot. So whenever something significant happens, whether it's the Thrive movie or whether it's this Oscar Romero, Ortega Hernandez, step back and say, what's going on here? You know, what, what is really happening? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it negative? Who does it, who does it benefit? Why? You know, and the challenge is, is that you know, not everybody has the time to do this. Not everybody has the time to, to scrutinize what's happening in the world and say thumbs up, thumbs down, I believe, I don't believe. That's the challenging part because it becomes a full-time job at that point, right? Which is why I guess you have me, because that's kind of what I do. I've turned OCD into a career path, by the way. I don't know if you've noticed that, but that's really what I've done. Um, so, but anyway, that's, you know, that's, you know, that's the formula, I think, to understanding what we can, what we can begin to filter out and then allow to have the most tangible, real, and discerning experience of what we call reality. Because I think if you allow some of the stuff to fall away, then, then, then a different picture begins to emerge. And this is, you know, this is staying out of the trance. Now, I'm not saying that, that we don't have an opportunity to move on to the next level, you know, that it may not be this magical. You know, I'm not saying that it won't be a magical kind of instant um, experience where we all like trip together at, you know, at the same time, on the same place, on the same day, in the same moment, and, we, and all of a sudden we look around and we're like, you know, one of those Star Trek episodes where, you know, the crew goes down to the planet and all of a sudden everybody feels good simultaneously because some flower hit them in the face. I'm not saying that that can't happen. But I just think that that, that being aware, consciously aware of the signal is very important. Be consciously aware of the signal. Who, why, where, to what end. Okay, I think uh, I think that's I think that's it. I think that's the end of it's the end of the show. What do you think? 52 minutes, that's not bad, is it? Um, Wednesday is the day before Thanksgiving. You know what I'd love to do on Thanksgiving? Um, I'd love to do a show, and I'd love to have people call in and express what they're thankful for, what they're grateful for. I mean, let's, let's use the energy on Wednesday, provided that we haven't had some, you know, weird 11, 20 to 11 you know, bullshit to, you know, happen. Um, but let's use the energy on Wednesday as a day of gratitude. I've always loved this time of year, partially because sun in Sagittarius moves into my first house. I, there, I'm, I'm clearly on the record. I'm invested in it because, you know, my first house is mostly Sag. So it feels great in my first house. I expand. I feel good. I feel jovial giving, all those good things. When I used to drink uh, and the sun would come into my first house, it, I trust my deal. Like, let's go. Bacchus. Now, now, now calling Bacchus to the, uh, to the main stage. Um, so I like this time. It's, I think it's a great time. It's a time for, you know, really rejoicing and expanding. It's in the air. People are, are, are you know, there's a there's a vibe there's a vibration, so let's take advantage of that. Let's get the holiday season kicking on Wednesday, 
because really that's when the holiday season starts. I mean, you know, we're we're 30 days, it's almost 30 days, uh, in, in, you know, away from from Christmas. In all in all the darkness and all the commercial clock trap and bullshit that Christmas represents, and you know, and then we of course I don't want to neglect our our uh, folks that celebrate Hanukkah. Um, there's a whole you know scene around that as well. But let's not let's not you know let's not denigrate the energy, which is really a special energy. That's, that energy is the return of the light. And not, not many people understand that, but you know, after the 23rd of December, we have more and more light coming back into our lives incrementally each day. And that's a, that's a wonderful metaphor. So let's kick it on Wednesday. Let's get it started on Wednesday. And uh, I'll be a pain in the ass. And I'll ask you to call in and share something in the spirit of Sagittarius that you're grateful for and happy for to have in your life. Let's generate some goodwill. Let's create a collective field on Wednesday. And, and let's leave the show feeling really positive and, and as upbeat and grateful as we can. Friday, I don't have a guest uh, scheduled. I may not have the show on Friday. I may take Friday off, one, because it's a holiday, and I don't think a lot of people want to call in on, on Friday or listen or with family. So I'm going to honor that. I probably don't have a show on Friday. So let's, let's, let's take the Wednesday show. Let's have some uh, giving giving of thanks on Wednesday. I'll do some charts. You know, I'll do, you know, I'll do what I do on Wednesday, and then uh, no show on Friday, and then we'll be back on Monday. And, uh, and I'm sure we'll have some very interesting material to go over on Monday. I want to thank everybody uh, that listens and is in the chat room. I want to thank Janet for running the chat room. I want to thank uh, Erica for helping me on the YouTube side of things. And, and the YouTube channel, by the way, is really taking off. And it's thanks to Erica. Uh, she's put up shows uh, pretty much real time. Like I'm sure she'll, pro- she'll put this one up. And she's put up a lot of the archive shows and getting a lot of listens. So and that wouldn't have happened without Erica. And I thank her. Very grateful for that. And everybody else for supporting this. You can go to my website, robertphoenix.com, and check out some of my other stuff. And hopefully a new post by the end of the day. All right. So take care. Uh, I love you all. Use your head to discern what's real. Your heart is open to what's possible. And I will see you on the Wednesday show. All right. Take good care. Adios. Amigos. We are living in a computer programmed reality, and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs. We would have the overwhelming impression that we were reliving the present, deja vu, perhaps in precisely the same way, hearing the same words, saying the same words. I submit that these impressions are valid and significant, and I will even say this, such an impression is a clue that at some past time point, a variable was changed reprogrammed as it were, and that because of this, an alternative world branched off.